Hi there, Leo listeners. Cara here from leolisting.com, where I help advanced English learners fall back in love with their favourite films and series by teaching them how to break free from the subtitles. So, I'm going to go kind of back to basics about certain points to do with um, listening in this video, which is all about how not to improve your listening skills. The thing with listening in languages and English and other languages is a lot of the advice is a bit crap. Um, a lot of us don't know what we're doing wrong. Most teachers, including me, before I took an interest in this stuff, we don't teach it, we just test it. So nobody really knows what they're doing. So today I'm going to go through some of the mistakes we're all guilty of. And I don't like pointing out mistakes and going, you are wrong, this is wrong. But for this, it's really important for me to kind of go over the problems, what's wrong, and then help you rectify them. So that's what today's video is all about. It might be a bit long. Remember, you can always go over to the blog as well and you'll find the transcription of the whole video if it's easier for you to, to go through it that way. Um, otherwise, uh, stick around uh, and I'll, I'll take you through how not to improve your listening skills. So the first thing to do to not improve is to just listen. So that's the ba if you don't want to get any better, um, then just listen. Just listen with no purpose or no goal or strategy. So now I'm being a bit unfair because obviously just listening, just powering through, like eventually you probably will see some improvement, but it'll take ages. And the thing is that if you do this, this is the biggest problem. If you do this, you'll never know what your problem is. Do you see what I mean? So if you just listen, you'll never know, did I not understand because there was a new word? Did I not understand because words and sounds change in fast speech? That's the idea of connected speech. Was it something else going on? So, you know, in films and series, it could be cultural references or something like this. So this is why, and I really, if there's one thing you do, please make sure that if possible, that when you listen to something, that you also have something written that you can then use to, to check, basically, as a, as a way to actually, okay, look at, see what you heard, and then check and, and find out, you know, where did you go wrong? And this is why um, activities like doing dictations or doing shadow readings really work because they, they force you to actually, you know, see where you made a mistake and, and, how to, and how to fix it. So really the idea is that you need to do something um, with your listening and have something to, you know, check your work, essentially, something written. Okay, the next way to not improve your listening skills is to spend all your time and all your energy getting obsessed with finding the magic bullet. So the magic bullet is a lot of people are going around the internet looking for the magic bullet for English. So, you know, the magic solution to being fluent or the magic solution for remembering words or the magic solution for understanding everything in English. So here the important thing to remember is that there is no one magical solution for mastering any area of English. There, is, there isn't one. There, just, just, just stop looking. There is no magic solution for fluency. There is no magic solution for remembering words. There just, it doesn't exist. So what you really need to focus on and what is a much better use of your time is mastering yourself, right? And mastering your learning. So getting into habits and routines with your listening, reflecting on your listening, trying new things out, getting feedback. This is how you improve. And that works for any area of English and basically any skill you're trying to develop. So the thing is, when people talk about listening skills in English and, and these things, they talk a lot about resources and people tell you, well, you should listen to this, you should listen to TED Talks, you should listen to this podcast. But we don't hear a lot about the techniques and the activities that you should be doing to improve your listening. And again, it comes back to this idea that there is no magic resource. 
So what you need to do about the resource piece is sit down and ask yourself, well, what type of English do I need? Do I need to understand conference calls? Do I need to understand presentations? Do I need to understand native speakers? Do I need to start understand speakers, other speakers of English, so other accents, people who speak English but are from, a, you know, another country? And then, you know, ask yourself, okay, the answer might be no, might be yes, and then find material to solve that problem. So if you need to understand presentations at work, well, that's where TED Talks are useful. If you need to understand, you know, other native speakers, if you're living in the country and you want to improve that, don't waste your time with the TED Talks. Go and watch vlogs, go and watch TV series, go and listen to podcasts. That's going to be more useful. And then the next step is, of course, doing the right kinds of activities. But just decide based on what you need. Do not get obsessed with the magic bullet. Okay, the third thing that you're doing, probably, to not improve your listening skills is hiding from the reality of fast-spoken English. So I said at the beginning, listening is something that's very poorly taught. So what happens is most teachers, and I include myself in this, I'm not I'm not blaming or shaming anybody. I used to do this too. So most teachers just test you, right? So you can remember in class, at school or wherever, you know, you listen to something, you have a list of questions, you choose A, B or C, and then that's it, right? That's not teaching, that is testing, all right? And the thing that you tend to learn are strategies, compensatory strategies, right? So these aren't strategies to improve your listening. These are strategies to help you cope. So things like, well, just guess from the context. Use the visual clues. Listen for stressed words. Now, these are useful strategies, but what needs to happen is you need to learn how to understand real, fast, spoken English with all its difficulties. And that's not easy. Uh, you know, and we don't want to deal with it. We'd all rather listen to, you know, slow audio, slow teachers on YouTube, easy audio for English learners. Of course, we prefer that because it's scary. It's scary when you listen to fast native speech, but that's what you need to do. And you need to understand how the words that you already know in writing sound in speech. You need to try pronouncing things these way. You need to learn about connected speech. You need to do ear training exercises like dictations, like gap fills. I'm going to give you some resources, but you need to know that you have to confront real, fast, spoken English. Okay, the other thing people are doing, uh, or you're doing, or <laughs> is to not improve your listening skills, emphasis on not, is worrying about how many words you need, phrasal verbs, or slang. So the real problem in listening is the words you do know, the words you know in writing, all the little grammatical words that you already know. The thing is, in conversation, for instance, we tend to use the same 1,000 or 2,000 words. You know, in day-to-day -day conversation, we're not using 10,000 different words. And of course, I understand, if you haven't lived in an English-speaking country. Probably you don't have all the informal everyday expressions. But you can learn these if you listen to the right type of input. So earlier I mentioned things like podcasts and, and vlogs and things like that. Also, not all phrasal verbs and not all informal expressions are important. So some of them we use a lot more than others. So you want to concentrate on learning those words. So um, why are the words you do know the problem? Well, so you, can, so you can understand that you can know a lot of words and still not understand. What happens is words change in fast speech. Essentially, speaking requires effort, right? And we want to minimize our effort. This is why words join together. This is why sounds disappear. This is why sounds blend together. This is why we emphasize some words and not others. That's essentially the idea of connected speech. And that's what you really need to... Um, be working on amongst other things. Okay, the other reason that uh, you're not improving your listening skills or the other way to not improve them is to assume that speech and writing are kind of the same thing. So they're not, right? <laughs> Let's just clarify this. 
So spontaneous speech, conversational speech, it is really messy. So when, for example, you read a transcript of a conversation, it's kind of an incoherent mess. So the thing is, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you haven't planned in advance what you're going to say. You just make it up as you go. So this is why in conversation people, you, you know, in any language, not just English, you know, people, we pause, we hesitate, we use filler expressions like, you know, and the good thing is you can filter these things out because they're not, they're not important. And you can also use them in your own speech to sound uh, more natural, which is good news, isn't it? And, you know, we don't speak in nice organized paragraphs. That can happen in a TED talk, for instance, but that's because it's planned. Okay, and even even movie and TV dialogue is a bit more organized, but conversation is a real mess. So don't expect it to be nice and coherent and like paragraphs. That's not how we speak. Okay, so we've been through how not to understand your listening skills, how not to understand your listening skills, how not to improve your listening skills. This was the complete guide. Now something practical for you. So here's what you need to do next to improve your listening skills, of course. So I want you to decide on your goals for your listening and pick the right type of resource for for your needs. So I don't know what you need. You need to reflect on, you know, what is it that I need to understand so I can do the things I need to do in English. I want you to just commit to stop wasting your time Growing, um, I can't even think of the word, scrolling, tra- trolling, trolling the internet. So going through the internet, all the pages of the internet, looking for the magic bullet listening resource because there isn't one. So just stop. Okay. Um, and what you can do instead is focus more and learn more about listening techniques and exercises to train your ears and help you deal better with fast native speech. So I've got a little product called the Leo Listening Log, which gives you a structure, gives you some activities you can use. Um, You can also use the fabulous Tube Quizard website, which is all about um, ear training, or Helen's Language Home, which has some lovely uh, exercises on connected speech. Make sure as well, wherever possible, that you're using listening resources with some kind of text So that could be a podcast with a transcript. It could be um, a film or a TV show with subtitles. Um, Yeah, that's that's basically the two two main ways to get a text. Okay, and make sure that you are reflecting on what you're doing and keeping track of your progress. So even when you start doing the right things to better understand what you hear and to improve your listening skills. Progress is still slow, so make sure that you track and you reflect on what you're doing. And again, the Leo listing log will help you with that. And just remember, you know, you're doing great. Um, You're making progress and and it's all good, especially now you know how not to improve your listening skills and what to do instead. So wherever you are, if you're watching or if you're reading this, Um, All the resources will be, well, under the video if it's a video and somewhere in the blog post if it's a blog post. Okay, and I'd love to hear your comments, any questions you may have, any commitments you're going to make. What type of listening resources are you going to focus on now that you know what you're doing? Uh, Let me know. I love to hear from you. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.